Hi, so today we're going to talk about my June TBR. In this video, I am going to tell you about the books that I am planning to read in June, but this is only really going to be fun if you also share what you're going to be reading. Even if you don't plan your reading one month in advance, uh, like I do, I am sure that some of you will have at least one book that you want to get to in June, so let me know in the comment section. The main reason that I have started doing these TBR videos at the beginning of every month is so that I can give you the opportunity to read along with me and also give you advance notice on the book reviews that you can look forward to uh, throughout the month because I will be reviewing each of the books individually as the month goes on. Also, starting this month, and this is very exciting, I have grouped the books on my TBR into different reading projects or challenges. A couple of these projects are ongoing, so you might already know about them, but some of them are brand new, so this video is also an announcement of those reading challenges. Now, I'm going to begin by telling you about the existing reading projects and what books we'll be reading as part of those in June, and then I will tell you about all the new reading projects that we are starting this month. And as usual, you will find links to all the books in the description box. If you appreciate my work and want me to continue making videos like this one, and I love making videos, there are several ways in which you can support my channel. Now, the main way is simply by watching the videos until the very end liking them and leaving comments, that's really important, leaving comments is really important. But if you would like to give a little extra, you can do that very easily by buying your books online from my links. Actually, that will not cost you anything extra, but I will receive a small commission from the books you buy from my links. Now, I make my videos for each one of you, so your support means a lot to me. But let's start talking about books. now. The first ongoing reading challenge that we are doing is 12 books for 2022. And the pick for the month of June is the novel Moon Tiger by the English writer Penelope Lively. Now, Moon Tiger won the Booker Prize in 1987, and it is a story told from different points of view that don't follow a chronological linear progression necessarily. Now, the novel starts with the 76-year-old historian Claudia Hampton, who is terminally ill, but has one final ambition, which is to write a history of the world, but using her own life as a blueprint. The premise of Moon Tiger sounds incredibly intriguing to me, so I cannot wait to read it. Now, if you want to read this novel along with me, and it, it is a very thin novel, uh, let me tell you that I will be publishing a review of Moon Tiger on the last Sunday of June. So I'm doing that now with the books from this challenge. I'm publishing the reviews on the last Sunday of the month. So the last Sunday in June, that's going to be June the 26th, okay? Now, my next ongoing reading challenge, which is coming to an end, but still has a couple of months left in it, is Reading in Search of Lost Time by Marcel Proust. Now, I have this, uh, all the seven volumes in this one volume. I have been reading one volume per month since January, and there are a total of seven volumes, uh, as I said. Now, in June, I will be reading the sixth volume, I cannot believe that, uh, which is entitled in English, uh, The Fugitive. In French, is entitled, uh, it is entitled Albertine Disparu, but in English, it's entitled The Fugitive. And I am on track to reading the last volume in July. Now, I decided a while back, and I'm gonna put this down because it's really heavy. So, I decided a while back that Instead of reviewing each of the volumes individually as I read them, I would wait until I finished the whole thing and then make a video about the seven volumes, just one video covering the whole thing, also covering my reading experience and giving you tips on how I think it is best to tackle this gorgeous but incredibly lengthy, complex, and for some people, me included, before I started reading it, intimidating book. Now, that video in which I discuss the whole thing is probably going to come out either in July or in August, if things go according to plan. So, that means that you're going to have to hold on for a little while yet. But, in the meantime, 
and this is really exciting. Let me tell you about four reading challenges that I'm going to start in June and that you can join in if you fancy and I hope that you join at least in one of them or maybe two or maybe all of them. It's completely up to you. Now, all these reading challenges are ambitious but they are feasible and I hope fun. Okay, so let's begin perhaps with the most ambitious one of them all which is that started in June we are going to be reading the Bible as a literary work and we're going to read it back to back. I'm going to start from the beginning and work my way to the very end. So the idea is to read the book of Genesis in June. That's all we're going to do in June is read the book of Genesis, which is the first book in the Old Testament. And then we're going to see how that works out because I haven't decided yet whether I just want to do one book of the Bible per month or one every two weeks, which would be two books of the, of the Bible per month. I haven't decided that yet, but let's start small, okay? And let's start with just one book, with the first book this month, okay? Now, if you want to read the Bible along with me as a literary work, you can get any edition of the Bible you prefer, or perhaps the one that you have lying around at home. Now, if you read in English, I would highly recommend the King James Bible. But that is not the Bible that I will be reading. At least, it will not be my primary text. Instead, I will be reading the Catholic Bible, which has a few extra books in it as part of the Old Testament that Protestant Bibles do not include. So you're not going to find those extra books in the King James Version. But do not worry, because I will let you know which of those books are when we get to them, and it will be months before we get to those books. So then you can decide whether you're going to read those extra books or not. It is completely up to you. Now, I am not choosing the Catholic Bible for religious reasons, even though I was kind of raised Catholic, but largely not practicing. Remember that we are reading the Bible as a literary work. This is really, really important to remember, okay? So we are reading the Bible just as we would read any other classic. Now, the main reason I am choosing the Catholic Bible is because it is the most complete version of the Bible there is because it includes all those extra books and I want to read those too. But the other reason, which is perhaps more important and practical, is that I own this old leather-bound, heavy, beautiful, gorgeous, leather-bound, illustrated Catholic Bible that is a bit of a family heirloom. So, you know, I have this around the house, so I thought I would read it. This version also has illustrations which are a bit cheesy, but it has all kinds of extra information as well, which I think might help when reading along. Okay, whether we end up doing two books of the Bible per month or just one, as we're going to do in June, this is going to be a long haul project, okay? But like all my reading projects or challenges, I never know if they're challenges or projects. Okay, think about them any way you like. This will not take over my channel. Reading the Bible as a literary work will not take over my channel. All it will mean in practical terms is just one video about the Bible per month, perhaps two videos per month about the Bible. Uh, if I end up choosing to do two books instead of just one. But there will be plenty of other videos about other books and other kinds of books every week, okay? So reading the Bible as a literary work is not going to take over my channel. My channel is not going to become a Bible channel. But it's going to take some time because I'm going to do it very gradually. Hopefully you will too. So we will be doing it gradually. And why? Because I think that's the best way to kind of digest everything and try to understand everything. But also, so we have time to read also commentary and interpret the text correctly or see the different interpretations that different sections have. I've no idea. But I will be talking about that as well. I will be talking about my reading experience in those monthly videos. And I hope you will share yours in the comment section for those videos. I will also create a playlist so you can easily join in with that project at any point and you will find all the videos about the different books of the Bible easily here on my channel. That means that you can read the Bible if you want to do this project. You can read at your own pace. You don't have to read one or two books a month or anything like that. You can do it at your own pace and once you finish a book, you go to that playlist and you look for the video for that and watch it, okay? Now, I'm really excited about this project, but also a little bit scared because 
Reading the Bible as a literary work is by far the most ambitious reading challenge I have ever taken on. And I don't mean in the time I've been doing, making videos and doing this, but in my whole reading life. So I'm going to need a lot of support from you guys. Okay, now I have to say something. Uh, there are two reasons, two main reasons why I'm doing this challenge. Number one is that this is something I've been wanting to do for years and I've tried, I've made several attempts, but they never really worked out until I watch a series of videos that a very famous and excellent Brazilian booktuber, Tatiana Feltrin, is doing on her own channel. Now, she started this, I think, last year, so she's already read a lot of the Old Testament. I want to watch her videos. Um, I've watched, uh, I think, the one on Genesis, at least up until the point uh, that I was familiar with before it got a bit complicated. And then I thought, you know, this project sounds great. Why don't I do my own version of it? I'm not going to copy Tatiana, of course, but I'm going to do my own version, mostly because I look and I could be wrong, but I couldn't find anything like it in English. So I'm just going to do my own version of it and I'm going to do my own version of it in English and hopefully add some value by doing that. There are a lot of, there are a lot of videos about the Bible of course, and reading the Bible here on YouTube, but they tend to be religious videos. That's not at all what I'm going to do because I'm not a religious person to start with. So yeah, anyway, so thanks Tatiana for being an inspiration. And let's talk now of the second new reading challenge that we are starting in June, which is reading one world classic per month. And when I say world classic, I am including English literature but it is important to me that I don't restrict myself to English classics. In fact, we are going to begin with a great 19th century novel from Brazil. We're starting with Brazil, which means that this project is not even going to be Eurocentric. I don't want it to be Eurocentric, okay? Although inevitably, I am sure there are going to be plenty of European books down the line. And thankfully, because there are great books from Europe, obviously. But the first book, okay, that Brazilian classic that we are going to be reading in June is going to be this one, Don Cachemujo by Machado de Assis. Now, I own this edition, which is from Portugal. It is published by Guerra y Paz. So I'm going to be reading this novel, Don Cachemujo, in the original Portuguese. Now, I know I have a lot of viewers from Brazil and Portugal. So, you know, they have access to different editions, not just this one. Uh, there are many different editions, I think, of this novel in Portuguese. And I'm going to link to the ones that I can find in the description box in case you don't have one. But, and this is great, Don Cachemujo is also widely available in English translation. So I'm also linking to the translation by Elizabeth Hartwick, which I'm sure is excellent, so that everyone, not just Portuguese speakers, can read this novel with me. Now, why should you read Don Cachemujo? You might have never heard of it if you're not Portuguese or Brazilian. Well, for one thing, Susan Sontag, the great Susan Sontag, once wrote that Machado de Assis was the greatest writer ever produced in Latin America. So that's quite something. Don Cachemujo is also one of the best known classics from Brazil. And as with some of the best novels from the 19th century, this one also deals with infidelity. But in a completely different way to Anna Karenina or Madame Bovary. Because here, what we have is the suspicion of a possible infidelity. But we'll go into all of that in my video review, which will come out at some point in June. Now, you may have noticed that this TBR is some kind of return to classics for me. I never really abandoned the classics. I don't think anyone could accuse me of that. But it is true that in the first half of this year, 2022, I did want to read more contemporary literature. And while I am not giving up on that necessarily, I do want to focus now on uh, classics. Okay, I want to focus more on classics. And that brings me to my next new reading challenge, which is reading all of Shakespeare's plays. Yep, you heard that right. Now, I'm not sure still if I can do or if I will do just one play per month or one every couple of weeks, so two plays per month. Now, Shakespeare wrote 38 plays 
Anyway, so no matter how we end up reading and talking about these plays, this reading challenge is also for the long haul, just like the Bible reading, okay? Now, in June, we're going to start this project by reading Hamlet. Why Hamlet? Because I believe in reading the best books or the masterpieces first. So we're going to be reading the famous tragedy about the Prince of Denmark. Now this is a bit of a departure for me. I do read plays, I have read many plays in the past, but I have hardly ever discussed plays here on my channel. So my videos about Shakespeare that you will be able to watch from June onwards, uh, starting with Hamlet this month, are going to be a bit different to what you're used to, but I hope you will like them. I'm not really planning on reading any new releases in June, but the next book is definitely contemporary fiction or if you like a modern classic. I'm starting another reading project, but this one involves re-reading books that I think are worth reading more than once. And there are many books that fit that category. So for June, I have chosen a novel entitled The Tartar Step by the Italian writer Dino Buzzati. Now, The Tartar Step was originally published in Italian in 1940, and I'm going to try to read it in Italian, okay? But uh, of course you can read it in translation. Mm, if I'm not wrong, I read The Tartar Step the first time last summer, so almost one year ago, but I kind of feel like I breezed through it and I didn't get as much from it as I probably should have done. Also because back then I did not really do a review of uh, the Tartar Step on here, this is my chance to go back to it, go deep into the novel, read it again, pay close attention to it, and then discuss it on a video. Now, apart from all these books, I may read other stuff as the mood takes me and if I have time, because although it is important for me to plan part of my reading, at least part of my reading, and not just because of this channel, but in general, so I can meet my reading goals, it is also important that I allow myself some flexibility and spontaneity in my reading. So there might be videos in June about other books, okay? So I'm just gonna do that to keep you on your toes, as they say. So I hope that you can join me in reading at least some of these books, and I will see you again in my next video. Bye.